Hi, I'm Sergio Coronado. I'm in charge of uh, front end innovation upstream programs for Duracell. And what I want to do is just give you a view of what matters to us, okay? From an industry standpoint, uh, Duracell, as you probably know, is it's leader in alkaline batteries across the globe. Uh, and what I want to do is just share a little bit of, in terms of what, what's important to us and give you a little bit of background about our company, okay? So uh, uh, a little bit, oops, this is not it, that's it. Um, basically, we are a, uh, as I was saying, alkaline battery company. However, you know, we basically uh, manufacture and make products across a variety of batteries. Uh, one example here is, uh, in addition to alkaline batteries, we're pretty significant in lithium primary batteries. Uh, it's a significant and a growth area for us. Uh, we're also in rechargeable batteries, and as part of our licensing business, we, have, we actually sell auto batteries. We're actually market leaders in that space on a global basis, so it's a pretty big business for us. And you know, we also participate in what we call power adjacencies. It's, it's interesting because our brand name really travels to anything that has to do with power. So our strategy moving forward is that we really care about you know, having batteries close to consumers. And uh, you know, any product that uh, uses batteries, I think we have a way to win. We have the, the credibility with consumers. So what's important to us, it's actually very simple. Uh, we're always looking for superior primary batteries. Anything that increases the energy density, power, and, and reduces cost of our primary batteries, we're interested on. And the second thing is, uh, we really want to grow more in rechargeable batteries. You know, we have some presence there, but we're not huge, right? So one of the things we would like to do is to, um, to, be, to have a superior technology in that space. So for us, it's important to figure out how do we create differentiated batteries. Of course, there is uh, the big markets of electric vehicles and things like that, yeah, but we're really more into consumer goods and consumer products, okay? Couple of thoughts that I want to leave you with. Uh, first of all, these are the kind of the two questions that we always are facing as we deal with the start of companies or new technology, right? Is uh, there's always a question of when do we invest? Okay. Typically, that's a very tough question for us because we're not into early stage investment, right? We're a company that we would like to invest when we really see that there is some level of demonstration of the technology and the, that we can foresee a way to get it to market, right? That's the big difference between us and VCs, right? VCs want to show the value of the technology. In our case, is we want to have a finished battery. So that, that makes it a bit different. Uh, the next one is, uh, how do we reduce development cost and time? Uh, it's interesting to see that uh, the, in the case of batteries, it's, it's a high capital investment industry, right? And there was some talk already talking, 24M was talking about you know, the investment of lithium ion batteries. Yeah, this is a very expensive, uh, highly capital intensive category. So for us, figuring out ways to reduce the cost of investment is actually very, very important. A okay? couple of messages. Uh, this is very important. You know, when we think about batteries, you know, many times we get approached by uh, startup companies or universities and stuff like that about per perhaps a new material that seems to show energy, power, and voltage that look very, very exciting. Okay? The one message that I want to leave with you is that for us, in order to have a finished battery, we have to go through all this. Right? We have to go through uh, what is the supply chain. We have to go through registration requirements, cell design. Many of you have seen that you know, we may have a really exciting material, but once we put it into a cell, the energy density that we get or the value is not quite there. Right? So each one of these steps along the process could actually kill the project. Right? We've been in situations where there's a, uh, you know, everything seems to work, the technology is working, right? and all of a sudden the, the market is not quite there. I'd like to give you the point that the way we see this is that the closer the technology is to our base business, the easier it is to, for us to make uh, decisions, right? So for example, if you bring a lithium primary battery or a technology that works for those applications and it's demonstrated, for us it's, it's easy because to, today we sell those batteries and we sell hundreds of millions of those batteries, so it's easy to make th that decision. But the one point is, you know, any one of those steps that I'm describing here could actually kill, uh, kill a technology. And the other point that I've seen a lot is that, you know, when I go back and internally, some of the technologies we've done in Duracell, it usually takes 10 to 20 years to get a technology out, right? So that's the other piece that we need to be realistic, right? It's at what point in time we believe that technology has advanced enough for us to start foreseeing a potential commercialization of technology. And that's very important to us, okay? Uh, another point is uh, scale-up is always underestimated. And we've seen this so many times, right? Uh, companies come to us and they offer us a wonderful uh, technology that could, you know, has been demonstrated at the micro or milliampere hour, right? And looks really, really exciting. And, uh, but however, you know, one of the things that we've seen is that when you start to scale that up to ampere hours, which is what matters to us, 
there are all kinds of issues, right? The, the scale of it is so fundamental as we look at technology. So my advice to you guys as you think about you know, your technologies is like, you know, we need to start thinking about what happens when you scale up. And there's all kinds of variables. I just put a few examples there. But you know, things like electro thickness, right? Sometimes the technology is really uh, demonstrated that, you know, uh, as, as I see this, is the gap, it seems to, it's about energy density, cycle life, and cost. But we want to demonstrate that in a, in a consumer size kind of battery, which I, well, that means to me ampere hours kind of thing. So very important thought. Uh, the next one is uh, affordable learning. And I'd like to tell you how we think about investing in technology. Uh, what we like to do is really to have uh, multiple investments. And the one thing that, when you look at that tree, I kind of uh, try to communicate that. You know, we like to do like small bets in uh, high risk, high potential areas, right? When there is a, a small commitment from us as a company to a new technology that could be high potential, you know, but the risk of the financial risk is low. For us, it's easy to make those decisions as long we can uh, that we can see the growth opportunity in front of us. Okay, so we we like to do that. However, as you go down, right, and the level of investment that is required for us starts increasing, we need a lot more demonstration. And in some cases, we need like when I call about uh, base programs, we need to know what the market is, right? The closer, and this is the point that I was making to you guys, is the the closer we are to the to our products the easier it is for us to make a decision. Today, if you come back with a alkaline technology that really fits with our core business, it's for us, it's easy to make those kinds of decisions. Okay? So think of it that as we think about our portfolio from our company, we try to have bets in each one of these. So a few small bets, some medium bets that you know, we know what the market looks like, right? There is a business plan towards that, but there's still some things to be demonstrated. And there's base programs that really build on the core businesses that we already have. Okay? One of the challenges that I want to mention to you is that we have been approached many times by companies that they want a big commitment right off the bat with us. And to us, this is a challenge, right? And I think uh, many times opportunities get lost because of that, right? Uh, a company wants us to make a big commitment, but we don't know enough about the technology to make that commitment, right? And, and one of the things that I've noticed is sometimes in the startups, uh, we, you know, the startup tries to solve for all the problems that are required to develop a battery. And I think that's a missed opportunity because sometimes, you know, the, the startup has a capability around materials development. That's their core capability, right? And it's not about cell design. So to me, a better approach to do this in the future would be that we collaborate, we bring cell design and manufacture, which is what we do, right? And we work together with the uh, startup company in terms of the materials development or the new technology. The challenge is that sometimes the commitment that uh, some of the startups want is very, very high. So for us, that prevents you know, getting into a really fruitful relationship. Okay? I think that's it. Thank you very much.